A very warm welcome to all the viewers of M4TV Australia. You're watching The Icon, where we bring you stories that inspire from around and across Australia. Today, as guest, I have with me Dr. Anisha Dinas, an Ayurvedic practitioner based in Sydney. Let's welcome Dr. Anisha. Uh, thank you, Welcome, thank Dr. Anisha. Thank you, thank you, Sharma. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Yeah. We're glad we are having you here today. Thank you. Well, Dr. Anisha, so um, we know what your current uh, profession is, but tell us about this little Anisha uh, as a little girl. Were you the same, you know, you know, caregiver, someone who wanted to, you know, help people, you know, you know, treat people? Uh, or was this something that developed later? You know, how did you decide and know that, you know, this was your calling? Uh, actually, Shama, from my childhood, I always loved playing, you know, doctor, doctor, like, you know, then it was more like giving injections and all those things. I remember, like, always I used to bring others and give them injections and all those things. But always I wanted to become a doctor. You know, I loved doing that. Uh, all those things were always there with me. And also, Ayurveda is not something new to my family. Like, you know, we have always been grown up with that. Like, I have always been uh, from my childhood, you know, always I have seen my grandma making medicines, lahiums, all those things to my mother. And my even when I am sick or something, always my grandma used to give me some lahium. Like, my, my uncle used to uh, give me some medicines. So, always, it has been always there with me, like, you know, with me. So, always that was, you know, somewhere in me, like, you know, I knew that like you know this is a good thing like you know the effect it uh, does on others i have always seen it uh, in first hand so maybe that was always there in me like you know i'm just a bit curious was your ma grandmother an ayurvedic no 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 but uh, you know in kerala it is uh, it's like this like you know she even now like she's 85 or something but even now she makes the medicinal oils for my mom like but definitely my uncle is uh, ayurvedic doctor a doctor my sisters uh, i have a sister a lot of cousins and a lot of cousins who are uh, into ayurveda yeah beautiful so that's the beauty of you know uh, growing up in a culture like that you know i think in indian culture you know i have you know it's, it's very close to nature and you know uh, taking inspiration from nature or you know finding cure within nature is not very uncommon in india uh, this is probably why your grandmother would you know treat you with um, you know the, the, the knowledge that he, she had about these um, exquisite herbs uh, which maybe you know you grew up and learned as ayurvedic medicines uh, yeah. It's beautiful how this knowledge is transferred from, you know, one generation to the other and people still, you know, st uh, continue doing it. Like you said, you know, medicinal oils, herbs, uh, yeah. it's, it's beautiful and fascinating. But yeah. um, going into Australia, we understand that, you know, uh, the practices are different or, you know, how we can practice Ayurveda is extremely different from um, how it could be done in India. Um, how have you found, uh, you know, this transition from uh, tropical land to, um, you know, a much more uh, different, uh, uh, you know, geographical zone like Australia? Yeah, actually, honestly, when I came 10 years ago to Australia, I didn't even know that there is Ayurveda here. But always, like, you know, I wanted to, like, you know, my passion was Ayurveda. I wanted to do something in Ayurveda. So I just uh, randomly, I came to know about an association like Australasian Ayurveda Association. So that was like the first step. So from there, I took it and I had to start my own practice. But the difference between uh, Indians and I mean, India, like, you know, the place from where from I am from and here, uh, like the people, like, you know, the, it is very different, isn't it? Even uh, like our metabolism is different, the way we eat is different, the food is different, our, uh, like, you know, our lifestyle is different. And um, the most important thing is uh, back home, people know, like I said before, like most of them know certain oils they know, certain medicines they know, it's not new to them. But here everything is so new to the people. So we have to explain, you know, like uh, what is happening, why, what this is doing to you, what this diet is doing to you, for example, salads might not be good for you like that small small things to tell them you know from the root uh, root uh, you know like from the basic level is quite challenging sometimes yeah 
Interesting. So, um, apart from all these challenges, like um, understanding that you know Ayurveda comes from a specific space where you know uh, the the climatic uh, conditions are very different. How do you manage to you know um, bring in those medicines and you know uh, propagate them here? Or how do you uh, do you propagate medicines here, like herbal medicines, or how do you source your medicines? Uh, actually, we give uh, we uh, bring in the medicines. Uh, like there are dealers here, like who actually do that, and we actually get it from them. We doctors we buy it from them. So generally, it is from the Kotakal or Vaidyaratnam, like that. Uh, they are quite a famous pharmacies in uh, uh, Kerala. So we are uh, very very recognized pharmacies in uh, Kerala. So we get it from them, and uh, generally we bring all uh, like they bring in all the medicines. So it is not much of a difference in uh, medicine wise. The whatever medicines. are available in india are also available here so only thing is like like i previously said like the metabolism so the dosage might vary what dosage we are giving in india might not be necessary here so like that so the medicines generally are available so most of the medicines are available from kotakal vaidyaratnam and all here so we generally use those medicines yeah Well, Doctor Anisha, you know we understand that the concept of the world becoming a smaller place is, uh, you know, not not new to anyone anymore. The world is called a global village, and yes, we can source uh, things from anywhere in the world, and you know, make sure that we get it here in um, yeah, wherever we are. But um, the awareness of becoming a global citizen is also increasing. Environmental concerns, you know, understanding that you know, buy local, you know, start using local products, you know, eat as much as local food as possible. Uh, this is what is you know trending these days. In such a situation, um, you still you know um, choosing to get medicines from India. If these are herbal medicines, why can't you consider doing it in Australia? uh that's actually a very good question like uh, first thing is not all the herbs because every like for example one kashayam or one arishtam it has not just one herb you know it has lot of medicines so it, in ayurveda it says you know uh, that is the reason why ayurveda has very little side effects also because you know if one med- because we mix lot of herbs together so one medicine complements the side effect of the other one like that you know so that is how the medicines are made so most of the time the unavailability of the herbs you know even today like even for example in india also in a, in a small state called kerala like you know if they are manufacturing in kerala also not every herbs are we get it from kerala some are got from north india or some other places like that because the same thing applies here also it's a very good thing like if we are manufacturing here it is a very good thing but because of the unavailability of many herbs uh, we are we might not be able to do that like and even if you are doing that that would be just one drug like you know for example one turmeric or one ashwagandha or like that it may be a combination like kashayam like draksha di kashayam varna di kashayam that might be little difficult like you know because we need a uh, many herbs and not everything is available here and without everything it might be not complete it might still be an incomplete hmm interesting uh have you have you uh, you know understood or you know have you uh, studied about the um, indigenous medicinal system in australia uh honestly i haven't yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, because uh, uh, you know everyone talks about uh, natural medicine, so I was like wondering if you know because Ayurveda is so closely related to uh, you know uh, natural medicines and herbs, um, you know there is definitely a possibility that you know the indigenous in this community in Australia also uses herbs, and you know um, I was just thinking you know thinking loud about how you know these kind of medicines could uh, you know. probably be you know the best for you know someone who is living in australia because each land produces what each individual probably needs uh, or you know yeah. that individual in that land needs uh, so i was just considering you know i was just thinking maybe uh, i'm just a layman you know you you're probably the expert and you could probably know more <laughs> actually that's a very valid point that you have told because you know in olden days that is ayurveda is around 5000 years ago old one right so those days the acharyas or the vaidyas they used to do the same thing wherever they live that locality you know they used to pluck the plants and then and there they used to make the medicines and they used to do that but by 18th century like that it started getting little more commercialized you know we started getting arishtam 
some tablets you know everything in a form of uh, bottles packets all those things uh, that was when you know like slowly all this the uh, instant medicine started because previously it was the same thing like uh, you said now like you know people used to then and then make the medicines and give it but these yeah, we don't have different. our own uh, little herbal garden in you know, all of our courtyards here yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 now it is because you know because uh, previously you know wherever you just go outside you are getting one ten herbs but nowadays because you know like uh, uh, because of the globalization or whatever like you don't find the plants that much but that's actually a very good idea and probably in future it will be happening like that because now it's becoming more and more strict here and you know because of uh, like it's much much uh, like you said like you know everything everybody needs and believes more ma- made in australia so it would be a good idea like you know if we do the manufacture or we plant cultivate the plants here and we make the medicine but like i previously said you know there are limitations for that also because not everything uh, can be done so we have to like you know uh, make the herbs or make the yogas we might not be able to use the traditional yogas we might have to change it a bit but still that's a possibility yeah Well, you just mentioned about things, you know, being very strict here, stringent um, in terms of standard and quality check. Uh, well, um, Ayurveda has come under the radar um, quite often, uh, unfortunately, very unfortunate. But yes, uh, in, with regard to the medicines, with regard to the quality and um, you know the, uh, the product labeling, it has uh, definitely had to come up, uh, you know, a couple of times. Uh, why do you think this happens? So what happens is like you know every plant every plant like you know ayurveda ayurvedic medicines are basically in a physical form they are like whereas the western medicine is more like a can okay, we take the active component but in ayurvedic medicines we take the medicine as a whole so what happens is like you know the place where the plant is grown some soil is naturally it is rich in lead everything so if every time before any ayurvedic product is released into the market according to the rule we have to go like a heavy metal analysis test has to be done that is like a tg approval uh, so what happens is always even in there there is a permissible amount of lead that is allowed because of the soil all those things you know so that is always there like you know there will be a permissible amount that is there in everything like our fruits our vegetables our chili powder everything will be having that so what happens is sometimes based on the age of the patient or you know how the patient is having the metabolism how he is reacting to certain things and based on the pre existing conditions or health conditions and all some people might show it in their body like you know they might show it like uh, high levels of lead or they might have some lead uh, uh, lead poisoning conditions or symptoms or something like that but uh, that has been there but having said that uh, always before doing any uh, like before releasing any ayurvedic medicines generally as a as per the rule we have always doing it like we always do the heavy metal analysis test and we are releasing it to the body and also it is like a like ayurvedic medicines you know like it's a very very big market like you know around 8500 crores of medicines are being sold in india like you know every year like so that is the amount of medicines that is being sent so it is not that you know it is that harmful to your body because of the good effects like you know it has that many good effects on the body but only thing is sometimes if it is given in a wrong dosage or without something like you know it might be dependent on the patient or you know the dosage or condition it might show some wrong effects on the body yeah lovely dr anisha there are two ways that you know we can you know consume medicine one uh, as essence or you know t- extracting the essence out of uh, you know something and using that to you know treat certain ailments on the other hand we can use raw crude products uh, you know as uh, naturally as it is found within in nature uh you just explained about you know using uh, you know components in its uh, you know freshest or rawest form uh, uh, that which is practiced in ayurveda uh can you tell us why you know using these products in its whole form is the best for one's body uh because like our acharya acha like charaka has said you know this anything you know if you any a, every any side effect has an antidote in the universe only so if you're taking a plant as a whole when you're taking a plant not necessarily everything we are taking as a plant because some plants we use as a root some plants we only use leaves some plants we only use flowers so that varies but what happens is when you're taking as a whole rather than just taking the ac- uh, chemical component or the active component from that we are actually balancing the side 
effects because it the potency first thing the potency comes down it is not very potent and you know it is less potent to the body and also the second thing is you know the side effects if one is causing any side effects on the body the other one just imbalances it so that is why always people say that you know ayurvedic has very little side effects you know and it is not because you know always the nature is only made it in that way you know so one thing if the something is wrong with something it only like if one thing is causing some problem with the like very potent or something the other thing just balances it so that is the way the nature is made but having okay. said that yeah but having said that even ayurvedic also there are so many forms of medicines like you know we make swarasam like you know we take the juice from it we take make it in the form of kashayam we make it in the form of this like distill like arka we just take the active components from it by distillation process so all those things are there like you know there are different different process but only thing is we are not just taking one active component we are taking it as a whole so that makes it more easy for the body well ayurveda you know can be practiced as you know a system where you know one can rejuvenate oneself you know in a certain t- uh, amount of time um, and you know that is usually a treatment that you know they undertake uh, staying within the ayurvedic clinics or hospitals and uh, you know undergoing that treatment you know in ayurvedic resorts however uh, i haven't seen uh, you know people doing it to that length here in australia what do you think restricts someone from you know um, uh, going in for a full fledged treatment Uh, actually uh, main thing is uh, probably the first thing is we like you know the facilities here like you know because there is uh, uh, to my awareness there is no hospital where you have an ip facility where the patient can come in and stay there and you know do the treatment like that and the second thing is finance you know when uh, compared like uh, it is quite expensive in australia when compared to india and all so pre- people always prefer to definitely there are many people who do treatment regularly everything but it is more mainly the op basis like people come in they finish their treatment and go back because ip like ip is the inpatient uh, uh, is quite less i mean quite less or it's not there at all there is no uh, such a facility in here so whenever we need people need to go we suggest them to some hospitals in india or kerala and they go back there and they do the treatment Dr Nisha what is the most common treatment um, that people approach ayurveda for like what what's the you know best that ayurveda offers to australia uh nowadays the main thing people are like you know first thing the people when they say about ayurveda the first thing that come to their mind is panchakarma they feel that like you know they have to do panchakarma like that it's like a detox treatment but uh, not every time that's necessary like you know panchakarma treatment is not every time necessary sometimes just an abhyanga and swedana would do sometimes you know a vasti treatment would do, do. because here um, having said that like you previously said when we go back to india it's like a 21 days or one month two month like that so people have the time you know they have the time they can come first they can relax they can just take the ghee then they can do vamana like that they can do it on the same pace but here the people's life is so busy and you know there are many other factors so what we have to do is we have to plan the treatment we have to tailor the treatment in such a way that it is giving the maximum benefit for the patient in a very little time so that is a big challenging thing that we have to face here because we cannot take it as a like a slow process because people people don't have that much time here and also like you know there are many other factors that is uh, uh that comes in you know comes in so we have to uh, like tailor the treatment so may basically the patient uh, may most of them they come for shirodara it's like a relaxing treatment so many of them enjoy that and uh, panchakarma like i previously said vasti any ma treatment when you mentioned panchakarma um anyone with an indian background knows that panchakarma talks about five uh, detox programs and um, yeah. i've seen the, that ayurveda you know or you know uh, panchakarma is extensively advertised um, in ayurvedic um, centers across australia yeah uh, i understand that one of these panchakarmas involve um, uh, vamana or you know induced vomiting uh, do you do that here yeah yeah we do that here like uh, in per people who need it like like i said it's not like uh, any anybody who comes for panchakarma we have to do vamana or we have to do virechana it's not like that if a person who he feels having if his condition is seeking for vamana if he needs if i feel that he needs vamana then definitely we do vamana amazing cuz um, i think you're one of the first practitioners i have uh, you know uh, spoken to who's uh, you know doing you know introducing vamana because 
most people I've spoken to I've you know, never mentioned that you know they would like to do vamana or they do they refrain from doing vamana in Australia for various reasons so I must salute your you know um, uh, bold moment and you know how you decide to do that so that's that's really amazing Dr. Anisha how you practice panchakarma with you know involving all the five karmas or all the five uh, uh, tasks that one needs to you know uh, purify one's body detox one's body and uh, it's amazing I know having um, spoken to you and you know knowing how you uh, practice Ayurveda in Australia uh, we wish you all the luck and um, we wish to see Ayurveda you know um, boom and you know probably like I mentioned earlier you know probably combined with uh, certain natural medicines that are found within this geographical space and you know maybe we could you know uh, do wonders and you know get back to the natural way and natural way of healing Thank you so much yeah. for coming on at the icon. You are truly an icon with the way you practice and the way you see, uh, you know, and treat people. Thank you. Thank you, Shama. Thank you again. Thank you for this uh, wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>